Hi, it's Abdullah, and I have one of the most special devices Nokia has ever made during their peak. I just received it from China, and it's a refurbished unit, but I do hope it works. You know, they don't always do. So, let's unwrap. It's actually in a better condition than I expected. And I don't know what kind of magic Nokia used to do, but their matte plastic finish had this soft and rubbery feeling that was just so satisfying to the touch. If you didn't know, this is the Nokia N95 AGB. This is the ultimate version of the Nokia N95, and it came out in October 2007, about six months after the original N95. And it only came out in this very sleek looking black color. For the record, this phone was so far ahead of the competition at the time, GSM Arena actually decided not to compare it to any other phone except the original N95, which was considered the gold standard. Those were the days of absolute Nokia dominance, so let me show you what made this phone so special. So let's start with the display. The Nokia N95 AGB had a 2.8 inch TFT display with 16 million colors, which is 0.2 inches larger than the original in the exact same dimensions. The resolution was 240 by 320, resulting in a mighty 143 pixels per inch and an incredible 46.3% screen to body ratio. And of course, like most cool Nokia N series sliders, it was a dual slider. So it slid up for the keypad, which was very nice and clicky, and it slid down for the music controls. And the sliding mechanism here isn't fully supported by a spring. So you need to actually push it all the way up for it to spring open and then push it all the way down for it to spring close. So it wasn't like one of those very springy sliders where you just push it up and it will go all the way on its own. You actually had to push it and then close it yourself. And naturally, the sliding mechanism feels pretty perfect, which is pretty much a Nokia trademark, really. The back houses a 5 megapixel camera with Carl Zeiss optics, which GSM Arena called at the time the best camera to be ever put on a phone. Of course, there is LED flash right underneath the camera model. Look at the cool encryption of the camera specs. So Carl Zeiss optics, Tessar 2.8 to 5.6 aperture. Autofocus, five megapixels. I'm gonna be sharing some image samples as well for you to check them out. It was also capable of capturing 480p video at 30 frames per second. How cute. It also had a QVGA front camera, only usable for video calls before we all became so vain and obsessed with ourselves, so you couldn't capture selfies with it. The phone also had dual speakers, so you'll find one on every side, as you can see. It also had a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and it was also capable of TV out, so that's quite cool. What that meant is that you can display the contents on the screen on a large TV display. And of course, another Nokia trademark is having a dedicated shutter key for capturing images and for the camera. And it has a two clicks, so half a click for autofocus and full click to capture the images. And it also had this photo gallery key as well, so you can immediately access the photo gallery from it. The hardware, as you'd expect, was really superb. I just love this soft touch plastic finish that they've implemented here. And even though the phone was almost completely made out of plastic, it was really nice to hold and it kept the fingerprints away. Well, at least on the back because the front had a slightly gloss finish, 
but the contrast between the glossy finish on the front and the matte finish on the back looks really cool. This phone was also one of the first phones to come with a dual core ARM 11 processor clocked at 332 megahertz. And it also had a 3D graphics hardware accelerator, which is a very implementation of a GPU on a phone. And one of the key improvements over the original was that it doubled the RAM. So this had 108 megabytes of RAM compared to 64 megabytes of RAM on the original N95. And this definitely helped with the proper multitasking. And it also came with eight gigabytes of non-expandable storage, which was another big milestone for its time. And finally, the phone also had a bigger battery capacity compared to the original, which you can access by clicking and sliding, as you can see. So the battery capacity is 1,200 milliamps compared to about 950 on the original. But of course, all of this would mean absolutely nothing without Symbian OS, which at the time was the ultimate productivity and usability software experience. And the Nokia N95 AGB had the latest version, which was version 9.2, and it was referred to as S60 third edition with feature pack one. So let me show you what some of the really powerful tools that were built into the software. So the phone actually had an organizer, a calendar, Engage for proper 3D gaming, email support, a web browser that supports Flash and utilizes Wi-Fi. It also had support for almost every video playback format you could think of, a document viewer to access PDF files, Word and Excel documents, GPS and built-in Nokia maps for navigation. It had predictive text input for a fantastic typing experience, and it still works really well. There is also a voice recorder, FM radio, a powerful music player, and the phone even supported voice commands and so on. The camera also had a rich suite of options. So you could choose any of these options here, including night mode and sports mode. You can also play around with the flash as you'd expect, switch to video, select a timer, sequence mode, which captures multiple images, and also change the color tone so you can get more vivid images if you want or have fun with sepia, black and white and so on. White balance, exposure compensation, sharpness, contrast. Some really cool features in there that I'd love to see on more modern smartphones, even light sensitivity. You could also sideload apps onto it, so the sky was the limit really with Symbian, and that was what made it so special and so powerful. The N95 and the N95 8 gigabytes were the ultimate powerhouse phones. Pretty much jack of all trades for its time, and it represented the very best of Nokia and Symbian, which was really a revelation. If only we could get something as extraordinary as the Nokia N95 was for its time now from HMD. The N95 was essentially the foundation on which modern powerful smartphones are based on. Anyways, that's it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would love to hear your thoughts on which nostalgic phone you'd love to be featured on the channel. So let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all very much for watching. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.